not everything was sunshine and rainbows tonight, Charlie. There was a lot of fun stuff, especially at the end. You know, tight, boring games can lead to dramatic finishes. But there was a little bit of drama in the first. Right. Matvey Mishkov benched after his first shift, and honestly, he deserved it. Um, was there any talk about that post game, or what did you think? Yeah, yeah, John Tortorella was asked about it, and he actually was pretty open about the fact that, yeah, that he did sit Mishkov. Um, obviously, it wasn't for an extremely long period of time. He probably missed maybe like three or four shifts at most, uh, was back in around like he he, he kept him on the power play. So yeah. it was the first oh, yeah. 515 shift that uh, that attracted towards his ire. Kept him on the power play. Power play came up after, but he missed a bunch of five on five shifts. By the end of the first period, he was back out there. And basically what Tort said is, look, I'm not going to go into the specific details of what it is, but this is something that the thing that that raised our eyebrows was something that we've been working with him on. We've been telling him he needs to do this. And Tort basically said, look, like there's part of me that I, I just I'm not sure how much he fully grasps what we're what we're telling him to do. There is a language barrier. Absolutely. And what he wanted. Michkov to do was just watch the game for a little bit. And he was like, look, you know, he's learning the NHL. My guess, and this is based on things that Torts has told us before today. One thing that they've harped on with Mishkov in the early going is not being as disengaged away from the play in the offensive zone, less about the defensive zone. Like, yeah, they, he had a couple turnovers and probably could have been harder on pucks there in that first shift. But in the lead up to that, He's just kind of hanging out by the side of the net. Connecty comes in to jet in to try to get the, uh, you know, try to add some pressure. I think their hope is that Mishkov recognizes that and then kind of cycles back up to the top of the offensive zone so that then he's the third man high and they're kind of in constant motion. Whereas Mishkov is inclined at this point to just kind of hang out by the high danger areas and wait for the puck to come to him. And I think what they're telling him is like, look, in the NHL, if you want to be the best version of yourself, you can't just do that. that that's not going to fly. And my guess is that they saw that. And I believe Jackie Spiegel pointed out that right before Mishkov got back on the ice um, for his first five on five shift of the first period after that play, he was talking with Rocky Thompson. They were looking at the iPad and then Michkov got a little tap on the shoulder from uh, from Torts to start the second period when he obviously was fully put back into the rotation. Look, Torts basically said this is part of the process. And he, he even said today, he said, look, we, we might sit him for a game or two at some point down the road. I don't know. But the idea is, is that we're teaching a 19 year old the NHL. And and that's what's going on here. And, I, you know, we knew that something like this was going to happen eventually. It, it's what it's game 11. And this is the yeah. first time he got sat for a few shifts. I didn't hate this way because it wasn't like he ended up sitting in the rest of the game. It would have honestly been a bummer for the the fans who came out on Halloween night to get to see two shifts of Mafe Mishkov before he gets relegated to the side of the bench. But it was enough to let him know that we're, we're telling you to do this thing. You're not doing it and you have to be held accountable. And I think it's be, it says something to the rest of the team too, that, that even even the phenom is getting held accountable when everybody knows we've been telling him to do something. We're mentioning it in meetings. We're mentioning it in tape studies. And then he doesn't do it. Yeah, it's going to have to sit for a little bit. Yeah, and that's – I'm totally fine. Like, honestly, I didn't even notice the offensive zone stuff. I thought the defensive zone stuff was just so glaring in how half-hearted it seemed to me. Like, sorry, bro, you can't play that way. And as long as it's not petty, as long as it's not like a hanging offense where it's, oh, he's in the doghouse now and there's no getting out. Like – this is this is just teaching. This is just coaching. I don't think this is yeah. any more like John Tortorella. Oh, it's torts being torts. Like I don't think it's that. I think this is just how like sometimes you have to coach a kid. Even this is how good they are. And they said on the broadcast, like, listen, the captain got scratched. Joel Farabee played a thirty-six second game last year. This happens to everyone. Like yeah. we we were joking. Like at least you know. There can never be the rift between him and the coach that they sit him in his hometown because he's, you know, they don't play in Russia. But like <laughs> Sanheim got sat in Calgary, Bobby Brink got sat in Minnesota. This happens to everyone. You're not immune to it, and that's fine with me. And then he got him back out there, took his regular shift, and that's all. That's just good coaching to me. Your city, like the mayor. 